Hey everyone, it's Kira with Polymer Clay TV and today I am going to show you a really fun technique for making liquid clay veneers. Yes, this is completely made out of liquid polymer clay and to go from this veneer sheet to making pendants or ornaments or decorations, magnets, whatever it is you want to make that have a dimensional look. See how there are little squares of silver captured underneath the veneer? So this is a layered polymer clay design and it's so easy. So let's go ahead and get started. You're gonna need some liquid Kato clay for this project. First, we will prepare a tile and put a liquid clay veneer on it and set it aside. So you're going to be putting a layer of liquid clay onto the tile that is very clean and allowing it to settle because the liquid clay is kind of like water and it wants to smooth itself out and settle. So we're going to put this clay on the tile and then set it aside while we work on the pendant parts. All right, so I have a collection of cutters. These are plungers, and this is just a regular round cookie cutter. And I have a small stencil. So this is a Heidi Swap stencil. Um, it's, it's a mini. And what I really wanted was my star-shaped punchinella, but unfortunately, that is not with me right now. It's in my other studio in Florida, because I'm between places. So. Um, I'm going to use this because it, the size is similar to the mini star punchinella that we have. And it's going to give me a similar effect. So first I'm going to roll this out to a number one, just a regular um, thick setting on my pasta machine because it's going to form the base of my pendant. So this piece of clay is big enough to fit any of my um, cookie cutters. So I'm going to go ahead and put my stencil face down on the clay and I'm actually going to roll over it so that it's kind of embedded in the clay like so and I'll let's see I'll start with this flower shape because it's quite large and it will definitely fit and I'm going to take some um, this is pulverized aluminum powder which is a very bright silver uh, none of the Prolexes are quite this bright of a silver, so that's why I like this. And I just found this at my art supply store. Um, you can certainly use Prolex if that is what you have. I'm actually going to use a soft brush for this because I really want all of these squares to be coated. And my finger isn't doing a good enough job. So I want... The clay to really have these little standing up squares of the aluminum powder. Really, really sparkly, high shine, and dimensional. That's why I pushed the stencil into the clay. Okay, so once I feel like I've covered enough area, I'm just going to close that powder because you know those powders can get everywhere and this is white clay so I don't really want it on every bit of clay so just keep your work area clean and release your clay from the stencil so you can see that I've got those cool dimensional squares popping up now and they're shiny and I am going to peel my clay off of my Teflon pad and then I'm going to cut it out. Okay. 
into my shape. So I've got some leftover and I'll just put the silver to the inside and use this again to make another one. So this is going to bake right now just as it is and if you want to put a hole in it that's fine. Um, if you wanted to use a bale, I think I'll use a bale on this one. So I'm just going to lay it on a tile and bake it and come back for the next step. Alright, so here's what we have. I made a few shapes so that I could play around with the technique and I'm going to leave them stuck on the tile for now. They're baked. And we have the the tile covered with wet liquid clay that I let sit for a while. And the reason I did that is so that all the lines in it that come from um, <clears throat> pouring it out would straighten themselves out because it does seek level. And of course I have my trusty black cat so just give it a good look and get any hairs or whatever out of there before we start the next step. So I've got my transparent red, transparent blue, and opaque white Cato clays here. And I have poked thin holes in the tips so that I can squeeze it out. And I'm going to make lines going across this. Okay, you'll notice that in some spots it didn't come out totally um, perfect, but that's okay. I am going to use now a knitting needle. You can use any needle tool that you have lying around to do this next step. I'm just going to turn it to make it easier for me. But basically, I'm going to drag this up, wipe it, and drag it down. Up and down up and down creating a marbled <clears throat> kind of a look also I'm going to note right now that my oven is preheated and the moment I'm done doing this I'm going to pop this right into the oven because I want this pattern to stay and if I let it sit too long the likelihood is that all this clay color is gonna kind of mash together and create one sort of purplish color from the red and the blue. So you don't want that to happen. So preheat your oven, do your fancy designs, and then pop it straight in there. I'm going to try to go all the way out to the edge, and if anything doesn't look the way you hoped it would, you can go back and rework it a little bit. If you want to add a little more in some areas and like leave some areas more open, that's up to you. I, I've created four pendants so that I could play. So I'm going to make one side way more complex than the other and just see how, see how I do. Because I've left the transparent clear medium in part of this, so you're going to be able to see through to these shiny stars or dots or whatever it is that you did. So now this is going into the oven right as it is on the tile for 30 minutes. All right, as you can see, now my sheet of liquid clay is baked and it's still attached to my tile. So what I'm gonna do is lift it up with my bleed and peel it off this tile. This is important because my next step involves high heat with a heat gun and if you do that to the clay while it's on the tile you do risk cracking the tile so we're not gonna we're not gonna blast it with heat while it's directly on the tile 
Same way I would not blast it with heat if it were on glass. I have cracked glass before doing that. Um, it's just better to remove it first. And I did it rather thickly, so once you get those edges up, you can see it comes off pretty cleanly from the tile. So now you can see that I can kind of see through it, but we're gonna turn this to glass by using a regular heat gun. And um, I'm not gonna do it on camera because it's really loud, but basically I'll do a little of it. You'll see you, you move the thing back and forth and you'll see it go glassy and then you'll just wanna keep moving it until your whole sheet is see-through. All right, so I cut my sheet with just a pair of scissors, or I used pinking shears to make it fun, um, down to a manageable size that's gonna fit on this piece of silicone that I have, because this process gets very hot. Okay, so the most important thing to remember when you're working with a large piece of liquid clay like this is that it can be delicate. You can rip it or you can, if it touches itself, it will cure together like a shrinky dink would. Here's a piece that I um, kind of messed up that way because I let it flop over on itself and now it's cured into one uh, little piece there. So you could probably capitalize on that if you wanted to but i that's not a desired result for this technique what we want is to not burn the table underneath because these teflon sheets although they are heat proof they do not protect the glass from the heat so you'll need something that's more heat proof and you still don't want to concentrate on one area because you can burn it so now we have this glass clear piece of liquid clay and we are going to lay it on top of these with the help of a little bit more <clears throat> liquid clay on these clay pieces. So how we're gonna do that is, I could put them all fairly close together, but I kind of wanna pick what parts of this go best with these pieces. So, I mean, that's the reason that I would do a big sheet like that. So I actually kind of like this piece that I messed up because it's just big enough to go over this circle. So if I get a pair of more precise scissors, I can cut off this circular part here so that I can get it to lay flat. So what we want to do is have enough clay to cover what's underneath and maybe not go straight across with the design because if I, you can line it up like this. So the point is we can see through it. So you could line it up straight or I could make an effort to line it up sort of off center so that it's interesting to look through. I'm going to cut off this little piece that's bothering me on the edge here. Okay, so I can lay this on top and the, the helper is going to be a little more of this plain liquid clay. So I'm going to put some clear, not too much this time, just a thin layer. using that brush from before that's dedicated to my liquid clay and I'm probably gonna, I probably have too much, so I'm gonna slide some off onto the other piece. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is paint this on, allow it to level, and 
and then stick that other piece of liquid clay right onto it for a second baking. And I wanted to have just enough that I don't have any air pockets and I can make contact with the piece that I selected to fit over the design. So just like so. And I'm going to smooth it down. Let everything sit and level off while I move on to the next piece. So you want just enough that there's enough there to touch this without um, leaving air pockets and stuff. So then you just look on here to find your next piece that's going to fit. And see on my side I have like big blobs so I'm going to not use that. I'm going to Cut those off but really now I've got like this great little piece of plastic that I can cut up and use as a veneer so I can drape it from the middle to the edges and smooth it on and stick it down to that liquid clay that's underneath Once we have everything on there, and look, just, this is pretty cool stuff, okay? These are Tonic Shears, Tonic Studio. Um, this is the Tim Holtz special one or whatever. I really like it, um, but I just like these shears because they have a fine point so you can get in small places, but they also cut polymer clay like butter. So if you're looking for a tool that... Um, you know, that really works well with clay to help you cut little pieces or cut a straight edge. I would highly recommend the tonic shears. I really like them and I use them all the time. So now that these are done like this, all ready to go in the oven one more time, I'm going to take another tile and I'm going to apply pressure on top here and to press these down and make firm contact with the clay underneath and bake it just like that so that I don't get any curling or air bubbles because I really want these veneers to bond with the liquid clay beneath them and stick right onto the top of the clay. Okay, our tiles are out of the oven and we're just gonna have to peel this up <clears throat> and see what we've got. And now is a good time if you want to use a blade I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to go ahead and trim off the excess clay, especially while it's still kind of warm. And you can do that just by laying your liquid clay front face down on the tile and cutting around your design. So in this way, you can use a veneer and not worry that it's a little bit bigger than the piece because you can always trim it from behind. And then you can finish the edges however you like. If you want to add a frame of clay, if you want to just get them close to the edge and then put some rub and buff or Inca gold or something like that on there. 
but you can see now that I've got the design underneath and they're floating kind of behind the pattern. So I thought this would be fun to make patriotic jewelry. The 4th of July is coming up and that's the American Independence Day. But you can do this in any color. I mean, imagine the different patterns you could put underneath and the different colors that you could put on top. So that was using the pre-made Kato liquid polyclays and colors, but you can also tint your regular liquid polyclay clear medium with alcohol inks. Um, if you want them to remain transparent like this so you can see through them, you've got to use alcohol inks, but if you want them to be opaque, you can use Pearl X powders or metal powders, whatever you want to create the um, the line effect. I like that these are transparent because I can see through the whole design. And then the white, because the colors of the American flag are red, white, and blue, I, I chose to use the white opaque. So that's a little bit of a um, different look. So have fun. I would really love to see what you make using this technique. And you can post pictures in Polymer Clay Tribe on Facebook. That is our Facebook group for sharing. Um, it's free to join and public, so you can find it easily. And you can find more fun videos like this on our blog at polymerclaytv.com. And you can find the cutters and things that I used at our shop, which is called Create Along, so that you can create along with us. Have fun, and I'll see you next week.